Hi, it's Greg here to continue talking about regular expressions in Vim. And as promised, I'm going to talk about look ahead and look behind. Now, Vim regular expressions are incredibly powerful. Uh, and I recommend that you look in the docs under regex because there is a treasure trove of information here um, detailing, for example, how different characters behave under the different levels of magic, um, but also all of the escape characters that you can use to indicate special things and control what you match. Uh, and some of the things that you can do with re uh, Vim regular expressions include things like look behind and look ahead. Um, and I think Vim regular expressions are incredibly powerful. I've never been able to find something that I couldn't do with a Vim regular expression. Uh, I think they're roughly equivalent to Perl regular expressions, and that's high praise indeed. The hard part is just remembering how to use them. So one thing that I find super helpful is this pair of escape sequences that allow you to control where a match is considered to start and end. Um, and you can use these to implement look ahead and look behind. Uh, they're very easy to remember because there are only two things to remember, yet you can do a lot with them. Um, and so I think the best way to convey what these do is going to be to show you an example. So I'm going to open a file in this project that I will be able to use as an example of some real code that we can look at, um, how these operators work in practice. Um, so let's talk about finding the word string, which is going to appear a lot in this file. Uh, I might also just want to find the word string when it appears inside square brackets, like the one that you can see there uh, that I the cursor stopped on. So if I wanted to do that, I would have to escape the square brackets because otherwise the square brackets have special meaning. But you can see there that it's found the, the string that was in square brackets. What if I wanted to select just the word though and not the brackets? Uh, so effectively I need a kind of look ahead to see that the word is followed by a square bracket and I need to look behind to assert that it is preceded by a bracket, but I don't want to select the actual brackets. Well, we could use the custom look ahead and look behind operators, which I literally cannot remember and would have to look them up, or we can use the special markers that I told you about. So I'll go to the search that I had before, um, but I'm going to add backslash ZE to indicate that I want the match to be considered to end at a certain point. And I'm going to use backslash ZS to indicate that I want it to be considered to start at a certain point. So it's still going to match the brackets, but it's going to pretend that it didn't match when it comes to delineating the boundaries of the match. So you can see there that it's definitely on a string that's inside square brackets. And if I move between the results, it's only stopping at the word string inside square brackets, which is pretty useful. Um, so another example of where you might want to use something like this would be right there at the beginning of that line. I could search for the word link. The word link appears in this file a lot. So I've got linkify, I've got link targets. I feel like I probably have something else as well, just plain link. Um, just say I want to find link when it's followed by link targets, uh, but not the other links. So I can use the same trick there where I use backslash ZE to say I want the match to stop here, but it's still only going to stop on the ones that are followed by link targets. So I find this huge, hugely useful. I use it all the time. Z, S, and Z, E. So that's all I'm going to show you in this one, but I'm going to come back in a minute and show you some case manipulation tricks that I also use fairly often. 